Hello, I'm Courtney, or as I like to think of myself, America's Jewish mother. Um, so I'm new to this whole vlogging and booktube thing, um, but I have enjoyed watching other people's booktube channels for a while now. Uh, so just a little bit about me since we've never met. Um, so I'm in my 30s. I teach for a living. I teach English um, at a public college. Um, I am a dog mom. I am a practitioner of yoga. I am an enjoyer and enthusiast of television shows from the 80s and 90s with strong female characters. Um, yeah, Designing Women, The Golden Girls, Murder, She Wrote, all in my favorites of all time. Ah, so yes, I, like I said, I am new to this whole vlogging thing, but I'm going to take you through my last week of April, um, and you will see what I do, which is not much, honestly, it's just pretty much yoga, dog related things um and since we're in the last week of the semester at my school i will be grading all of the things so i will let you come along for the ride some people are into quarantine baking meanwhile i just browned some mushrooms like i knew what the hell i was doing i'm so proud farfalla pasta with sauteed spinach and mushrooms Om nom nom. Okay, so I have these two stacks of index cards. The lined ones have different increments of time. The lowest amount is 15 minutes, and then it increases in intervals of 5 minutes all the way up to 45 minutes. And then these blank ones have different styles of yoga classes on them. Vinyasa flow, Warrior Workout, Yin, Hatha, Super Stretch, etc. So every day I pull one from each stack and then that will tell me which style of yoga I'm going to do today. And this is in addition to doing live stream classes from M3. Um, today's Wednesday, so I'm not actually scheduled to do a live stream class today. So Whatever I pull from the stack is going to be the only yoga that I'm doing today, but at least I'm going to be doing some form of yoga every day. So, let us see what I'm going to have to do today. Drum roll. Alright, so I will be doing a 20 minute Hatha class. Ta-da! Okay, so I'm doing 20 minutes of Hatha today. So I'm on the M3 online repository. I'm going to pick 15 to 30 minutes. And I'm going to pick Hatha. And this is what comes up for me to choose. So I will pick one and get back to you. About to do my online Hatha class. And welcome to Hatha, um, which I'm calling Stepping Up. We're going to focus on the transition, the very common um, and not super um, well broken down um, transition from downward facing dog to a lunge or warrior position. Good Great one. for you if you've ever struggled uh, with that movement or if you find that movement so easy that you've um, lacked awareness through it. Now I'm watching a Yoga with Adrian tutorial about how to get into Chaturanga because it's part of the basic vinyasa sun salutation sequence and I still can't get it because it's an arm balance and involves a lot of upper body strength and also core strength. So anyway, my core is weak, so we're going to work on practice with Adrian. Um, chaturanga can be this sort of like panic thing for a lot of people. And so here are three things that we're going to practice today to just help build strength and integrity in the body so that we can perform chaturanga one day with ease and with a happy mind and body and heart. Just look at that rain coming down out there. 
coming down pretty hard. Charlene is not pleased. This is cutting into her outside time. Isn't that right, Char? She's busy hiding behind the end table right now. That's her little safe space. These are toys she's destroyed and I've had to take them away from her. Hi, Char. Char, baby. Hi, how's that girl? Are you all right? It's okay, mommy not gonna let anything get the baby. Oh my goodness. All right, it's Thursday morning. It's a little before nine o'clock. I've got my coffee. I've got my book. And I'm about to finish Virginia Wolf's To The Lighthouse. But this was one way of knowing people, she thought. To know the outline, not the detail. To sit in one's garden and look at the slopes of a hill running purple down into the distant heather. She knew him in that way. Char's got her blanket up there and she's resting her head on it like a pillow. So sweet, oh my goodness. This is what I like to call stage three sleep for Char. Stage one is just lying on her stomach, sort of normally. Stage two is lying on her side. And stage three is when she is really in that deep sleep and flips over onto her back and is all spread eagle. So she can be cool and comfy. Look, you can even see a, a tooth. <laughs> So I watched this interview with Cher where she was asked about her, like what kind of exercise regime she does to keep herself in shape. Um, and she said that every day, in addition to other things, but every day she um, tries to hold plank pose for two to three minutes, which is insane. Plank pose is, plank pose is really hard to hold. So I figured if it's good enough for Cher, it's good enough for me. <laughs> so. Um, also, plank pose is good for building core strength, which I need for chaturanga um, anyway. So, I am going to time myself with this stopwatch, and we'll see how long I can hold plank. I've done this a couple of days now. I think the first day I held it for like 30-35 seconds, and then yesterday I held it for 45 seconds. So, I'm going to try at least to get to 45 seconds. We'll see how I do. Okay, wow, that was hard. All right. I made it to 50 seconds. This says, uh, I don't know if you can see, it says 51 seconds, but I had to come down in the last second and hit the button, so that probably took about a second. So yay, I held it for 50 seconds, and now I'm really tired. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to see what, uh, what the random yoga generator <laughs> system decides that I'm going to do today. I am signed up for a live stream super stretch class from 4 to 5 today. So this will be in addition to that. Um, P.S. In case you're wondering, super stretch is basically like a Hatha style of yoga. Except um, Hatha is more designed to strengthen and... I'm pretty sure I've heard Nick, who developed Super Stretch and is the co-owner of M3, say that Super Stretch is really more designed to release than it is to strengthen. Anyway, so let's see what else I'm going to do. So for today, I will be doing 25 minutes of ugh, core or power flow. All right. So, all right. So I'm thinking that it will probably be a good idea for me to do 25 minutes of core or power flow um, before I do the super stretch class because super stretch will probably be a good way to release tension um, in whatever muscles I engage in the 25 minutes of core or power flow. So yes, I think that is my plan. Okay, so 25 minutes of core or power flow. can probably guarantee it's going to be power flow instead of core. 
So I will pick uh, on the filters on the online repository, 15 to 30 minutes, and I will pick, uh, let's see, power and core. Oh, wait. Yeah, all right. I think I should just pick one or the other. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, so this gives me a handstand vinyasa flow. Uh-uh. 30-minute uh, power flow. Ooh, Chloe has 25-minute power flow. Chloe's one of my favorite M3 instructors, so I will probably do that one. Ooh, she has two 25-minute power flows. All right, so I'm thinking it's going to be one of those prior to the super stretch class. Look at this sweet baby. <laughs> Trying to get me to fight her for the rope. <laughs> oh my goodness. These are my little succulents. The one in the back I brought here from my office since I'm rarely going there anymore. But yeah, they just sit here by my living room window and they've done pretty well, I have to say. Now, I did kill one succulent recently. It was just one that, I don't know, I just overwatered it or something, and then it just never came, never came back after that. I switched it to different locations, and it just got worse and worse, and I finally just had to, had to put it to rest. But these are still doing well, so yay. Okay, it's a little before 12.30. Here's what's on tap for today. Grade all the things. So I have graded three papers in this class and I have 20 more. I'm not going to get through all of them today, but I am going to get through as many as I can before my yoga later today, which will probably be starting around like 3.15 or 3.30. So we'll see how I do. All right, it is time for some chamomile tea. Chamomile tea is my go-to beverage of choice when I'm stressed out like I am about grading all the things right now. And, oh wait, let me top that off a little bit. There we go. Um, and... I am drinking it in my designated tea mug. I actually bought this when I, pretty sure I bought this when I visited Lindsay in Portland a couple of summers ago. We went to, I'm thinking a waterfall or something like that, um, and I bought it from the gift shop. So yes, tea, om nom nom. Oh my goodness, who is such a sweet, sweet baby? There she is, Miss Charlie. Oh my goodness, she's so ready to go outside. You want to go outside? All right, let's go, come on. All right, it is later the same day. Um, it's almost 9.30 at night, and as you can see, I have now graded 15 papers in this class, so I only have eight left, which I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, I did all of the yoga, took Char on a walk. Uh, what else was I supposed to do today? Yeah, that was pretty much it. I, I did yoga, I walked the dog, I graded all the things. Oh, I still have a sink full of dishes. Hmm, gotta do those. All right, later. All right, I made it to Friday. Um, so, here is how I'm doing with all of the things. So in terms of grading, I have completely gotten through 
one class of research papers, which is very exciting. And I am very close to being done with a second class, as you would have seen from the clip from last night. Um, so yes, I have eight papers left in that class. So I also have a very small class of about 10, stu of 10 students um, who I also have research papers to grade. So, <coughs> excuse me. So that means I still have 18 research papers to grade. My literature students also turned in their last papers of the semester yesterday, so I also have 20 of those to grade. Um, plus, I'm kind of behind on grading their homework assignments, but I have to get those done and updated over the weekend so that they know where they stand in the course going into the final exam, because next week I'm going to get all of the final exams to grade, too. Wow, it makes me want chamomile tea just thinking about that. All right, so moving on. We're going to talk about what I'm reading right now and not about what I'm grading or not grading right now. Um, okay, so I don't usually read more than um, three books at a time. I used to be very strict about only reading one book at a time, but I've since sort of... Um, finagled it up to three. I really like them to be, if I'm reading three books at one time, I like them to be books in separate genres like poetry and a novel and plays or poetry and a novel and nonfiction or, you know, some combination like that. Um, it's actually not the case right now. I'm reading all three novels, um, but they are very different. So I guess that's, that's better than nothing. Um, so what I am currently reading right now, um, and I do not have a physical copy of this book, but I will try to remember to put the title um, in the video clip, um, is called Strangers and Cousins by Leah Hager Cohen. Um, and this book just came out, I think, within the last year. I think I read about it in a Washington Post article or something like that, um, some kind of book review. And anyway... Um, I'm only about, like, not quite a quarter into the book, um, but it's centered around uh, the gathering of a family for a wedding, um, and the book is structured into chapters that represent five days, um, before the wedding. So the first chapter is, I think, four days before the wedding, and then three days, two days, the day before, and then the day of the wedding. Um, and so this family lives in this town that's in the northeast somewhere called Rundle Junction. Um, and uh, the father is Jewish, the mother is not Jewish. Um, that comes to bear somehow. <laughs> um, and anyway, so they've all gathered for the wedding of one of their, I think they have five, I think they have four or five kids. I don't remember. It's definitely four or five, though. Um, so anyway, so they've gathered for the wedding of one of the one of the daughters, um, and the two parents are keeping a couple of secrets from the family, which I'm sure, because of the way books go, I'm sure those secrets are going to come out at some point, um, and I'm sure they're probably secrets that the other family members have that will also come out at some point. Um, there's also a nonagenarian aunt um, named Aunt Glad, um, who has spent a lot of time thus far reminiscing on things that have happened in the past, because she also grew up in that house. That house has belonged to the family for generations. Um, so I'm sure probably something will happen with her too. So we'll see. So that's, uh, that's Strangers and Cousins. I'm also reading right now, um, so I'm not actually reading The Confessor, but I am reading The English Assassin, which is the book uh, right before this in Daniel Silva's Gabriel Elon series. Um, so the Gabriel Elon series concerns an ex-Mossad agent named Gabriel Elon. Um, who works as an art restorer by trade, but keeps getting sucked back into various missions um, for uh, the office, as it's called. Um, so I read the first, and I, by the way, I read these a long time ago, um, not long after they first came out in the early 2000s, um, and I really liked them, and 
Not that long ago, I had a colleague um, at my work ask, come and ask me if I'd ever read these books because my colleagues like to ask me about anything Jewish that happens. <laughs> it's, it's fine, really. So, uh, but anyway, so he wanted to know if I'd read these books, and I had. Um, and he was really enjoying them and liking them. And so because we had that conversation, I was like, you know, I haven't read these in years. I would, I would like to reread them and see if they hold up. And plus, like, I've been reading a lot lately. Some of the books I've read are, are heavier, including the third one that I'm going to talk about here. So I figured it would be good to have something that's sort of a quick page turner, um, as this sort of a nice change of pace from, from heavier material. Um, so these, these Gabriel Alon books are just sort of like spy, thriller sort of things. Um, yes, but they're, they're light reading, I guess, in, aside from the, the violent aspects. Um, but I'm currently listening to The English Assassin on audiobook. Um, I'm not super far into it right now. I think I'm just about like two chapters in or something. Um, but yes, very... Like I said, quick, quick pace, page turner, um, definitely a nice change of pace from um, heavier reading that I've been doing lately, like Virginia Woolf or like uh, Native Son, which I'm about to start reading. So this is my, this is my last book of uh, Friday reads that I'm currently reading. So Lindsay from Lindsay's Book Life uh, and I are about to start buddy reading this. Lindsay and I went to graduate school together. Um, so I actually, this is a reread for me, so I read this book for my comprehensive exams um, in graduate school. So the way our program worked was that you had to pick three areas that you wanted to focus on, and I do basically 20th century American literature. Um, so my three areas were 20th century Jewish American literature, 20th century African American literature, and American pragmatism. Um, so anyway, so I had to read this as part of, of my studies for my comprehensive exams, but that was in, gosh, I'm thinking 2013 or 2014. Um, so it's definitely been a number of years since I read it, and I don't really remember all that much about it except for the basic premise of the novel. And Lindsay and I also, earlier this year, um, did a buddy read of Anna Karenina together, and sort of similar for me, it was a reread of the novel for me. I had not read it since undergrad. And so I really only remember kind of the like basic plot points, um, but not that much else. So I am looking forward to our buddy read of this, um, even though, like I said, I know it's going to be heavier um, sort of material because it concerns an African American man in Chicago in the 1930s who, um, well, you know what? I'll just I'll just read you the blurb on the back. Right from the start, Bigger Thomas had been headed for jail. It could have been for assault or petty larceny. By chance, it was for murder and rape. Native Son tells the story of this young black man caught in a downward spiral after he kills a young white woman in a brief moment of panic. Set in Chicago in the 1930s, Wright's powerful novel is an unsparing reflection on the poverty and feelings of hopelessness experienced by people in inner cities across the country and of what it means to be black in America. Um, I quite enjoy Richard Wright's um, short stories. I've taught his short story, Long Black Song, um, a number of times in my survey African American literature course. Um, and it's, it's a really good story because it enables us to explore notions around consent. Um, because there is a spoiler alert for a story that was published in the 1930s or 40s, um, there's, a, there's a woman in Long Black Song who um, is sexually assaulted, and it's not entirely clear that she was, or at least it's not, I mean, it's clear to me as a reader, but it's not always clear to the students that that's what happened. So it's a good story because it enables us to, like I said, explore um, issues of, of consent and who has power in certain situations. Um, and things like that. So those are the three books that I am currently reading. Um, so I will probably be back with a May TBR list, and I will also be back with an April wrap-up um, within the next day or two, and I'll probably also take you on a bookshelf tour or something like that. Um, 
So anyway, that's it for me from this vlog. Um, so I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. Um, I hope you're all reading good books. And remember, would it kill you to call your mother?